What an incredibly impactful study. Now, what we're looking at here is, or what I should say the researchers are looking at here, is the relationship in regard to green tea, particularly a component to green tea, often referred to as EGCG, otherwise epigallocatechin gallate, in relation to uterine fibroids. What they want to see is why in certain other studies, animal studies, including one particular one of interest will cover a human study, why green tea or EGCG was so impactful in alleviating a lot of the issues or reducing the severity of uterine fibroids quite significantly. Now, it opens the door to a lot of the possibilities and more studies need to be done. But however though, the impact of this particular research is enormous considering the number of individuals affected by this. So let's get right into the research as follows. New study using human fibroid cells supports use of green tea compound as treatment for uterine fibroids. In a preclinical proof of concept study from John Hopkins Medicine, researchers found that epigallocatechin gallate, EGCG, a green tea compound with powerful antioxidant properties could be promising for both treating and preventing uterine fibroids. Results of the study first posted online on May 25th add to growing evidence that EGCG, the component of green tea, epigallocatechin gallate, may reduce fibroid cell growth. The study was specifically designed to identify the biochemical mechanisms responsible for EGCG, the component of green tea's action in fibroid cells. They found that EGCG reduced protein levels of fibronectin by 46 to 52 percent. Remember, this is in like a cell culture dish, not an animal study as of yet, compared to an untreated control group of fibroid cells. They also found that EGCG disrupted pathways involved in fibroid tumor cell growth, movement signaling, and metabolism, and they saw up to an 86%, to reiterate, an 86% decrease in CTGF proteins compared with a control group. I know a little technical, but again, the research here was basically exploring why this component of green tea may be able to help so many women. But to proceed, Quote, the results from this study show that EGCG, epigallocatechin gallate, targets many signaling pathways involved in fibroid growth, particularly the extracellular matrix, according to the researcher from the fellow from John Hopkins University. EGCG supplements could be an easily accessible and natural way to relieve symptoms and slow fibroid growth, end quote. Now, we are going to cherry pick some of the interesting highlights of the full study in which the DOI citation, which is a link, will lead right to the full study so you can explore more on your own. But let me pull out a couple of uh, elements of interest to proceed. In a randomized controlled tri pilot clinical trial, women with symptomatic fibroids were given green tea extract. Now, each capsule was 800 milligrams, and each capsule of that capsule 45% of that was epigallocatechin epigallocatechin gallate, EGCG. For four months, just four months, results showed that EGCG reduced fibroid volume by 32.6%. I want you to reiterate this, reiterate the fact that this study was only four months. Now this study was conducted back in 2013. So I would expect it uh, uh, to be followed up with boy human trials, but as far as we can tell at this point from the research angle, not necessarily to proceed and reduce specific symptom severity by 32.4% compared to the placebo group. Now, this is a human trial. Notably, adverse events such as endometrial hyperplasia were not observed in the EGCG group. Footnote there to that study is obviously follow 27 you'll find out it was actually done in 2013. To proceed, to conclude from the full study, quote, we found that EGCG induced antifibrotic effects and altered multiple signaling pathways involved in fibrosis and fibroid cells. 
These results support further investigation, EGCG, as a treatment for fibroid growth and fibroid-associated symptoms in clinical studies. To date, one clinical trial showed that EGCG is effective in reducing fibroid volume and fibroid-associated symptoms without any adverse events. That was the footnote 27, and again, that was the four-month trial done in people, in humans, females, and that was 800 milligram capsules at about 45% standardized EGCG. To proceed, another recent phase one clinical study reported that hepatic safety profile in women in, with and without fibroids. In this study, no signs of drug-induced liver injury was reported in women who took 720 milligrams of EGCG. Now, the other study where there was a 32% reduction in a lot of the severity and also close to the volume was only close to about, again, 45% of 800, so you're looking close to about 400 milligrams. For simplicity, we'll just say half. Of EGCG alone or in combination with clomiphene, citrate, or letrozole for five days, the limited number of clinical data suggests that EGCG is well-tolerated and not associated with liver toxicity, according to this research here. Our data, quoting, provide insight into the underlying mechanisms underlying the observed effects on fibroid growth. Now, let's go to the full conclusion from the public study, which we see here. These results lend support to the friend, fibroids, and unexplained infertility treatment with epigallocatechin gallate, a natural compound in green tea study. There's the clinical trial identifier. An ongoing clinical trial of EGCG in women with fibroids who are seeking pregnancy. Wow. Results from the study show promise. Researchers caution that more studies need to be done and consumers should not try to do it self-dose along with green tea supplements. Further research on EGCG will include clinical trials with large and diverse patients, groups to determine optimal doses, as well as possible side effects of EGCG epigallocatechin gallate supplementation. Now, when you think about it, the number of individuals affected by uterine fibroids you know, I think close to, what, 25%? And this being pretty similar to a $32 billion a year industry, this is pretty big news for a lot of individuals, especially if you look at the other study and what we had there. That four-month study, just taking 800 milligrams of green tea per day to yield that result in severity of symptoms, 30% plus, is quite intriguing. Now imagine if someone's consuming green tea without adding publisher bias on a regular basis. What can the results be then? That's what future studies will help determine. But however, though, as always, gratitude to the researchers. I am humbled you watch. I hope this information in the future tends to help many individuals. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I look forward to see what you and I share next week. Catch you all next time. Bye.